What's going on guys, it's Sway and I'm doing yet another rig breakdown. This time it's going to be on my Canon EOS R5. You could essentially do this exact same build on the Canon EOS R6 or really any other camera body essentially. I actually have been recording this video on the R6 so this way you kind of get a view of what that quality would look like. So if you happen to be on a YouTube binge of cinema rig breakdowns, sit back, get comfortable and uh, actually first things first, let's take all this shit apart. Boom. Here you go. Every single piece of that rig entirely disassembled. Please give your boy a thumbs up for that because I absolutely hate taking this shit apart. Now let's get into it. So first things first, you're gonna need a camera because I have no idea how you're gonna build a cinema rig without one. I decided to go with the Canon EOS R5. I decided to go with this camera because the 4K that comes out of this is crispy AF. The in-body image stabilization is awesome. And then it also has a 45 megapixel sensor, which is awesome for stills if you're a hybrid shooter like myself. So. Yeah, EOS R5. And if you want more details on the R5, or you want a full review of it, or anything relating to the R5, let me know in the comments down below because this video is purely a rig build out, not a review of the R5. And the lens that I'll be using for this setup is gonna be the Sigma 24 to 70 2.8 art lens. I used to run the, uh, what's it called? The Canon L series RF. 24 to 70 that was a lot of letters for that shit but yeah i used to run the rf 24 to 70 visually that was an amazing lens it was like fucking perfect i just personally prefer the look of sigma lenses so that's why i'm always running a sigma if i'm not using the 24 to 70 on this build i will probably be running the sigma 50 1.4 which is right over here yeah so these are the only two lenses i'm ever using for video i'm not really that much into wide angles so you're not going to be running a 16 to 35 probably but yeah these right here my two babies and yes, you're absolutely right. This is an EF mount lens and there's no way that this is gonna go on to the R5, which is why I have this. So this is the EF2 RF adapter. This is the one that allows you to have the optional drop and filter. Currently inside this one, I have the variable ND. I also happen to have the one for the circular polarizer. I use either one just based upon my needs. If I'm shooting indoors, I'm just gonna run the circular polarizer. If I'm outside and there's like lots of changing light conditions wherever I'm at, variable ND will be inside. So let's get that all set up. Now I'm running this rig video essentially the same exact way I did my last one for the GH5, which will probably be linked up in the card in one of these corners. Uh, I like doing it this way because I love seeing the rig videos where everything is already built, but I kind of don't understand why people put the things there or for what reason or like what needs they have to get them to that point. I'm doing it this way so you can kind of understand my logic on why everything is here and why I felt it needed to be here. So. Sit back, relax, and uh, watch me build the fuck out of this thing. So essentially at this point, with the way that this camera is set up, you're good to go. The R5 shoots 8K internally. The 4K it shoots is fucking crispy as hell, like I said before. Sigma glass is absolutely beautiful in my opinion. I just like the way it shoots. Everything looks cool as hell. So with just this, you're pretty much solid. But you saw the title. This is a cinema rig build out. You're here because you've probably been binge watching a bunch of cinema rig videos. So sit back, relax, and let's get on with the show. Next up is going to be the cage because I have no idea how the hell you're going to mount all your accessories on the camera without a cage. The one I decided to go with is from Small Rig, which honestly most of the shit's from Small Rig, but uh, yeah, here you go anyway. If you will, yes, yes, there you go, beautiful, focus, awesome. Yeah, so pretty self-explanatory, Small Rig cage. I like this one because it has a little tool on the bottom so you can like mount and screw everything in properly and it's magnetized so you can never lose it. And then also the bottom of it itself, if you notice, is shaped to go onto a uh, tripod. So if you happen to forget your tripod plate, which your boy has done one too many times, as long as you have the cage on your camera, you're set. And now you don't look unprofessional in public. All right. And this is how the camera's going to look with the cage on there. So pretty self-explanatory. I actually really like this cage because if you see, there's another screw right here. Besides the main one, there's like a little baby one. It has little locating pins. So like there's two little pins on the bottom of the camera body. This pretty much prevents it from the cage like kind of sliding around. I used to have that issue with my GH5, my A7S2 and a couple other rigs I built. But yeah, this right here, it's solid. It's not gonna twist around. So yeah, definitely check out the uh, small rig cage. I'm not sure if the other ones do it, but the small rig one does it and it's cheap as fuck. So yeah, small rig, sponsibly. Now that we have the cage on here, let's start mounting some shit. So the first thing I'm going to actually attach to this is going to be this base plate from, you guessed it, small rig. So pretty self-explanatory, base plate. So I decided to go with this small rig base plate in particular because it has support for 15 millimeter rods, AKA these bad boys right here. 
The main reason for that is so you can mount more accessories on there. And then also a lot of cinema accessories or rig accessories all happen to work off of a 15 millimeter rod system. So if I do decide that I need to add more shit on here later, I'm pretty much good to go because this base plate supports these 15 millimeter rods. And while I'm speaking about them, let me just get them on here. And the cool thing I like about a lot of small rig shit is that they have these little thumb screws. So it's super easy. Like you don't have to carry as many tools with you. You just, as long as you have thumbs, you're pretty much good to go. Now, the way that I normally set up the rods whenever I set these up is, and I'm not sure if this is like the standard way to do things, I just always like to make sure I have some distance ahead of the camera body, so that way if I happen to hold it and I bump into something, the rods are taking the damage, not the camera. The rods were less than 50 bucks, the camera is a really large car payment, so yeah, I'd rather break the rods than the camera. And right about now, the rig is looking really, really bottom heavy, so let's just get the top handle on here. And it's also from, a, you guessed it, small rig. Let's put it up close so you guys can see. Boom. And this one I actually like because in terms of me not liking carrying tools and shit around, it also has a little magnetized Allen key, Allen wrench, whatever the hell you call them. Just right up there, so less things for you to have to carry. Even though normally if I am going to be bringing this whole setup with me, I have this little filter case from an old filter I got years ago, and I just put like every Allen key and extra piece of hardware Small Rig gives you, and I keep that inside here. Boom. And then uh, I went over this in the last rig video, but there's a couple different top handle options. There's this one, there's the one that looks like a T with the little sliding one, which I guess is more functional. I went with this one just because in my head it looks cool as fuck, because it got this little bend here. Sue me. And now for my next piece, the Atomos Ninja V or Ninja 5, whatever the hell it is. So the R5 is a great camera by itself. It just has to be plagued by a god awful codec that unless you're either running an M1 Max MacBook or a supercomputer, you're gonna struggle to edit this. I have the last gen of the Intel MacBook Pros. Everything was slid up to max specs and it absolutely struggles with this. So if I wanna shoot log footage and edit it smoothly and deliver shit fast and not blow my computer up while editing it, using your sort of recorder is absolutely necessary for me. Now, to get this mounted on here, where is that at? Here we go. I have this little monitor mount from, take a guess, I'm not even going to show you. Who do you think makes it? Who do you think makes it? Give me a second. Ro now you're right, it's small rig. Here you go. So there it is. So it's literally just a cold shoe to the little quarter 20 mount in the bottom of the Admiral. So let me just get that set up now. And then actually, if you look very carefully, you'll notice that I have it mounted to the top of the camera. So the reason for that is that I'm gonna mount it here at the back of this handle, right? Which I already know a lot of you are looking at this and this looks weird as shit and I 100% agree with you, it's weird as shit. Normally you always see people mount it up top here. The reason I built this rig out this way is I work with a couple of car shops and we work on a lot of high performance cars, which high performance cars are normally low slung and don't have the greatest visibility. If I'm shooting in those and I have the rig built with the screen up top, the rig becomes way too tall. And then essentially what ends up happening is I'm just shooting at the car, if I'm inside the car trying to film out, all I'm looking at is the dash of the car and the floor. I can't look out the window. And if I'm looking at the window, I'm pointing up at the sky, which isn't really a great angle to show twisty roads or intense driving. So I opted to mount it towards the back here. So that way now I have a lot of room up top so I can hold the camera up higher, which is pretty much this about as high as I'd get which is perfect because it's eye level, right? So yeah, that is the main reason for putting this thing at the back here. And then honestly, I really dig how it looks. One, I, I'm big on looks with my builds. Like it's just, the shit gotta function, but the shit also gotta look cool. That's just me, do what you want. But yeah, my shit gotta look fly. So I like how it looks here. And then actually when you're, when everything is said and done and put together, it actually balances it out really well because most of the weight is all like close to each other instead of having it where the rig is like from here to here and you have too many points where the weight can like shift. So yeah, monitor at the back, try it out. You might like it. So the rig is actually starting to come together now, as you can see, but we're still not getting power to anything. So that's going to lead me to these little pieces right here. First up, we got this little dummy battery that just goes from the R5 into DTAP power. And then we have this little DC power to DTAP cable, which attaches to the Atomos DC power adapter thing. Uh, I will leave links for everything down below. And if it's not a link, it will be the exact part name just because 
A lot of things from Small Rig are named with numbers instead of names. It's like a Mercedes Benz or some shit. So it's hard to just remember them off the top of my head, but I will have everything in a long laundry list in my description. So be sure to check that out. Now, the one thing for some reason, I could not find any videos of it online. And I guess I'll show you. Let me just take the lens off so you can actually get to see what I'm talking about. But I couldn't find any videos, at least when I was putting the rig together, of how to get the dummy battery into the R5 without allowing it to like just straight cut power because if you take the door off, the camera can't operate with any of the doors open, which is smart, but also annoying as hell. So you have to be able to have the door, but then how do you let the cable come out? There's actually a little fucking porthole here, which I'm gonna show you right now. Let me just crack this open so I can get to it. Technical difficulties. So you see right over here, all right, so if you look right here, there's a little door. You push that open. So then now, when you put in the dummy battery, boom, now the battery door can close. As you can see, there it is, it is closed. And then there's a little port hole thingy thing. And now it's just hanging out. So there you go. All right, so that's the dummy battery to detap. And then now we just have this little piece right here for the Atomos. It pretty much slides in the same way every other uh, NPF battery style NPF style battery slides in. So just the top part is that well the top, I guess if that makes perfect sense. And then the cool thing with this D tap cable or the DC to D tap cable is it has this little locking screw, so you can just it's a little bit of extra security, so you know you're not gonna like completely fuck something up. And I'm not gonna like hard tighten anything now just because I might have to like move some shit around later, but. There we go. So now, yeah, I have ways to get power to DTAP, but we still have nothing to actually allow us to get DTAP power. And that's gonna lead me to my next piece, which will be this boy right here. And this is the Tilta V-mount plate. So this one is cool as hell because it has a bunch of little options for extra DTAP, which is great because then I don't need to get like any other things or like weird adapters or whatever, it's just, Boom, I can leave everything plugged into this and then swap batteries out if I need to, if I ever run into a scenario where I end up running out of one of my V-mount batteries. And then I just slide it on the back. You can slide it wherever, the, wherever it happens to work better for you. This is just the way it ends up working for my rig. And the great thing about the uh, Tilta V-mount plate is that it also uses the same little thumb screws like the small rig does. So still, once again, don't need to carry that many tools with you. So let me just get everything plugged in now. And boom, there we go. Everything is now plugged into the V-mount base plate or V-mount plate from Tilta. And I have it set up like this. So I kind of route the cables underneath and forward just so there's less of them just like hanging all over the place because if I just left it off to the side, it would just be kind of hanging like it this way just because she has them shaking, nothing's really swinging everywhere. Actually, let me put the lens back on because I took it off for demonstration purposes. Boom, all right, so there we go. Rig is starting to come together as you can see. Bow, bow. But we still need power because I just have a bunch of things plugged in and there's still no juice running through. Which then leads me to the simple and most boring part of probably this entire rig, which is going to be the V-mount battery. There it is. It's a battery. It batteries things. So, uh, but no, in all seriousness, this is just pretty straightforward. You don't have to get some crazy expensive ass V-mount battery. This was like a 95 watt hour battery, which is normally I think the smallest capacity they have. Uh, it's cheap as hell. I got it on Amazon. It was a prime item. Boom, bam, boom. Shit got here. Okay. So then let me just slide it on. I like the setup this way just because, and I think I mentioned it previously, but now if I do happen to actually run out of battery, it's very simple for me to just boom, click, take this off, grab another battery, put it on, and then everything is still plugged in so I don't have to redo everything. On my previous setup, I was plugged directly into the battery. So if I ever did need to change batteries, I would have had to unplug it, take out the battery, put another one, plug it back in, which is first world problem. But when you're working and you're trying to be creative and all that, you don't want your gear to be the thing that starts to like hold you back and clutter your brain up. So the easier I can make my gear work for me is the easier my life gets and the more creative I can be, which means I can probably get paid more because my shit's gonna look fine. I don't know, logic, bro, I dropped out. But anyway, let's continue. Now we got a bunch of battery power hooked up, but the Atomos has no way of actually connecting to the camera. And that is why I got this cool little cable. It's nice, a little lightweight, just full HDMI to micro HDMI. Micro HDMI because Canon apparently thought, you know, this is a $4,000 camera that shoots 8K and that, you know, people who are used this professionally would love to use a micro HDMI port. Makes perfect sense. Canon, pull your shit together, bro. 
I'm kidding, please sponsor me. I'm kidding, I don't care that much. <laughs> Now, because of the fact that most of us know that a micro HDMI port is not the strongest option, uh, I have bought this. Let me get these screws out of here. Ow. Once again, small rig. Let's get that over here. And this is just going to be a little cable clamp, and it's just going to mount to the side of the cage, so that way um, any cables, whether it's HDMI, USB, yada yada, any of the ones that mount right up here, you can clamp them all, keep them secure, without having to worry about breaking a port if you happen to bump into anything. So let me get that on you. And now when you set up the little cable clamp thing, don't fasten it down all the way because you're gonna have to move it around because it's not like exactly set up where it's supposed to be. So the way I normally do it is I leave it a little loose. I plug the cable in first and then I move it around until I find the point where I feel like it should like actually stay. So where like the end of it will butt up against the cable. Then I tighten everything down. And boom, here you go, I will show you. And there it is. So everything is just clamped up. So now the cable, can't really pop out because I've heard horror stories from other people where they broke that little port and then now if you happen to actually have needed to be recording to the ninja you can't because you have to go send it off to get repaired and repairing this shit is never cheap so yeah just save yourself the trouble get this I mean I think it was like 20 30 bucks maybe probably less than that the thing is think about it this way you're gonna spend 20 30 bucks or you're gonna end up spending like a couple hundred because you didn't spend 20 30 bucks so Stop being cheap, people. Which I'm assuming you're not cheap either if you bought this camera or you're building the rig because these shits are expensive as hell. So yeah, just, just don't cheap out here. This is the last place you should cheap out on. Really. Now, if I happen to want the option for cleaner scratch audio or I just want to record through the camera internally to get audio, but I want it to be clean, I will then be using this guy right here. Pretty standard, basic YouTuber shit. Uh, this is just the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This is the one that's nice because when the camera turns off, the mic will turn off so you don't run through all the battery. Now, normally this is where someone would probably end up mounting it right here on top. But I already said before, I'm trying to keep this rig as low profile as possible, or not even low profile in general. I just don't want anything being taller like than this. This is like the max amount of height I want. So that's gonna lead me to another one of my accessories here. This. All it is, it's a little uh, cold shoe mount from Small Rig once more. And I'm actually gonna mount this on there, I guess, backwards. Normally, the reason I say backwards is under normal circumstances when you're mounting a mic to the camera, you have to slide it in this way from back to front. I set it up the other way so you're gonna have to mount things from front to back. The reason I do that is just because with the Ninja right here, it's kind of impossible to get where I want, but if I put it the other way, then I'm fine. So let me get it set up. All right, so now the mic is in. I just kind of routed in this weird way behind the handle just so nothing has like a possibility of getting snagged on anything. I try to keep all the cables as close to the camera body as possible. All right, and here's that in here. That's what it looks like. Bow. And now let me just plug the HDMI cable into the Atomos. Normally I have a little Velcro tether thing strapped up to this just so this cable is less like dangling out there. Like I said, I don't like things dangling, but uh, yeah, normally once that's tied in, super low profile, never see you coming. Now, this is not the lightest setup. If you try to one hand hold this for more than a couple of minutes straight, your wrist is gonna wanna commit suicide. So that explains this next piece right here. And that is a small rig, once again. I use left-handed one just because my right hand is kind of fucked up. So I like holding cameras in my left hand. So that's why I got this. You'll also have to notice that this is set up for a NATO rail mount. There does not happen to be one on the left side of this camera, which explains this next piece right here. Now, this is just like a super mini low profile rail mount. I like it because there's these cute little like buttons that are spring loaded. So that way, even if whatever you have mounted to it isn't like 100% tightened down onto the rail, it can't fall off and possibly break something or rip cables out or mess up something on set. So let me just get this on the camera now. And now we have the wooden handle on and I honestly really love how it looks just because I feel like the wood kind of offsets like all the black metal and the carbon fiber. And now speaking of aesthetics, the next piece I'm going to add on here, this might ruffle some feathers. I pretty much bought this 70% for looks, the other 30% for actual use. And that thing is, drum roll please, the Tilta Mini Matte Box. Now look, hate on me if you want to, but your camera setup instantly looks that much more pro when you're running a matte box on the front of it. Now yes, people should pay you based on the work that they've seen you do and the work that you're capable of doing, but honestly speaking, the way the real world works is people pay based on what they can see. The visuals are half of what you're selling them. Not just the visual that you're delivering, but the visuals when you show up on set. How are you dressed? How do you present yourself? How do you talk? How professional does your camera gear look? So, hey, look, 
if it happens to be something that will actually help my image look better because this will help with preventing light coming in from the side, help preventing flare, and then it also happens to make my setup look much more pro, fuck it, I'm gonna buy it for the camera. So you could either hate, don't hate the play, hate the game though. And then now to get the matte box to actually mount up to the camera, they give you a bunch of these little like adapters, step up rings, whatever. So this is an 82 millimeter filter thread. This is the 82 millimeter. So let me screw it on the front. There you go. And then the little step up ring they have here that's just adapter ring has like a little lip on it. So like as you press the filter up against it or the filter, the matte box, it will stop. So once you feel that stoppage, you just screw that bitch on there. And boom, there you have it. This is rig version 3.5 or whatever the fuck number I'm on at this point. There's been a lot of trial and error buying things that didn't work and then having to buy other things. So there's a lot of wasted money in here and my wallet absolutely hates me after getting this rig to the point it's at now. So please give your boy a thumbs up. It will help me somehow, I hope, maybe, please. So if you found this video helpful at all or you want to see more content, please let me know in the comments down below what you want to see. Be sure to subscribe, the little notification bell, all the shit that YouTubers be saying. And uh, once again, my name is Sway and I will see you in the next video. Peace. And if you were wondering, yes, I do have my own YouTube channel playing in the background because why would I give somebody else free clout off my own channel? Ask yourself that. Good day.